Hi friends, welcome to the world of data science training through experiential learning. I am Dr. V. P. Nantini Sundar this side. I am the product of Anna University Chennai with 23 years of experience. I've started my career with uh, IBM statistics uh, using SPSS software. I used to uh, guide a lot of people, MBA students basically with SPSS statistical package for social science, uh, the uh, statistical software in order to complete their projects. Then I have guided many people in MPhil and also in research. Basically, I am a certified global data science corporate trainer. I have completed various foreign certifications in data science, especially with various tools in Microsoft EDX as well as in Coursera. At present, I am conducting various online training programs across the globe in data science, encompassing business statistics, machine learning, and data visualization with Python, and also with R programming, and also machine learning with R, case-based analysis using SPSS and Microsoft Excel for US, Australian, and Indian participants, and also by collaborating with several reputed training institutes since July 2012. I've almost trained 2,700 plus participants worldwide. In all the batches conducted so far, I have received excellent reviews. For more details, please log in to Urban Pro website in order to know more about myself, the credentials, and also to know about my complete profile. Let us quickly jump into the session of the top for today's uh, uh, topic, that is introduction to pandas. Then creating data frames, how to create data frames. Then subsetting rows, how to select a few rows or the subset of rows. Then how to select specific columns. Then how to reshape the data using merge option. So likewise, we can see many topics in today's session. To start with, let us quickly see the introduction to pandas. All of us will be very curious to know how this pandas name, the library name has been coined, isn't it? So le let us quickly see what is pandas. Pandas is an open source library available in Python. Python itself is an open source software. Then Pandas was initially developed by the scientist named Wes McKinney in the way back 2008. And finally, it has been contributed by Chang Shi in 2012. The name Pandas has been coined or derived from the two dual words called panel data. So if you just take first three letters in panel and first two letters in data, then you coin together to have the word called Panda. So that is how you got the library called Pandas. Pandas library is built on top of the NumPy library. NumPy library is otherwise called as numerical Python to deal with arrays. So Pandas has been built on top of NumPy library. This library helps analysts in data cleansing as well as in data wrangling features in the domain of data pre-processing. Also, to know more about Pandas, Pandas is pretty fast and has high performance and wide variety of uses. Pandas helps us to import or load various types of data from diversified file formats such as CSV, comma separated value file, then JSON, SQL, structured query language, then Microsoft Excel. It could be XLS or XLSX based on the various versions. Also, Pandas permits many DML, that is data manipulation language operations, such as selecting, merging, and reshaping. Next one, we'll see 
how to create data frame with pandas whenever we want to use any built in methods from the related package first step is to import that concerned package on to our environment that environment or ide could be either spider from anaconda or jupiter notebook whatever the case may be first and foremost we have to load that particular library so we need to give import pandas as pd so this pd could be any name okay like it is an instance of that library that i am using here this pd could be any name not on not only pd many students used to ask me this question whatever the instance name that you give with that you need to uh, refer the related built ins for example in the next line you can see df the variable uh, uh, name a uh, data frame name that i am creating uh, then i am giving equal to assignment operator uh, post which i am giving pd dot since i have given pandas as pd import pandas as pd i am using pd dot data frame so the as a naming convention we always use pd dot data frame but it is not necessary that you have to use one and only pd so df equal to pd dot so the data frame python is case sensitive so we have to give capital d and capital f for data frame method so data frame is a method available in pandas package or library now i am opening the bracket here after which i am supplying in the data now you can see me uh, see the curly braces here then after which i am giving c1 then uh, 12 31 7 the data elements now c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 colon then i am having the list the data element list so it is in the format the uh, dictionary format it is in the dictionary format key value pair so key is c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 and the uh, value is uh, the data elements 12 31 7 72 84 10 30 46 49 8 98 65 8, 8, 65. likewise we have got phi key value pair which is simulating our uh, uh, dictionary non primitive data structure so likewise i am just giving the column and the set of data elements in it but i need to provide the row names for which i am using the index parameter for the data frame function then uh, in order to just provide the name i am just giving r1 within quotes separated by comma r2 comma r3 Uh, so for uh, so on and so forth till R five. Okay, so this is how I'll be creating the data frame. Now, the same data frame you can very well create with multi index. That is the alternate way of creating. With the same data set, you can very well add few more columns. So how to do that? The uh, first initial part of the code is similar excepting the last part see here in the earlier slide i would have given index directly the row name row uh, names r1 to r5 whereas here i am just giving pd dot i am calling another method multi index dot from underscore tuple system method name then for this i am passing the these values as my parameters now r1 will will take the value and uh, 89 r2 with 23 r3 with 98 likewise i am uh, creating it but i need to provide the names for this right so this r1 r2 r3 to r5 will hold the column name as row whereas 89 to 83 will hold the column name as val so along with this major data set it will also include two more columns with row and value and with these respective data elements so this is how you can create multi index the next is subsection uh, subsection is subsetting rows in a data frame 
Now let us quickly start out to extract specific rows based on certain condition. I'll give you two different um, examples, one with greater than symbol relation operator and other one is less than relation operator. Now to do so, I've already created, you would have seen me showing me the example, right? DF already we have created. So when I just want to retrieve, I need to give the data frame name that I've created, DF, then open brackets, which column I want to refer C3 column. See here, C3 column. So I have to give DF dot. Whenever I want to refer some column, I always have to give dot operator. Before that, I have to give that data frame name. So DF of DF dot C3, what is my condition? Greater than 90. So whichever the values, which is greater than 90, that will be retrieved and displayed onto the screen. Then uh, other way around, if you want to have the lesser than symbol, df dot c5 less than 55, then whichever the columns is to satisfies the condition, all those rows will be selected. This is how you can extract rows based on the condition. Then the other command could be randomly select n rows. Assume I've got a big data set. This we are seeing how to uh, dynamically create uh, the data set from our end. The same way if you want to work on with the uh, big data set, in which case you have to randomly select the uh, rows from the given data set. Then I can work on with one another function called sample. So sample or uh, all this uh, I lock or if all these methods are available in pandas package. OK, so I say df dot sample open brackets, I need to supply the parameters, that is numbers, number of rows. How many rows I want to select? I have got already five rows. I want to select two rows. That two randomly I want to select it. So random sampling. So df dot sample n of two. So randomly it will select two rows from the five set of records. Now, if I want to select specific rows based on the position, I need to go for df dot i lock. I lock. I lock is integer index location. I want to retrieve the rows based on the integer value that I pass here. So I am just having one colon two. Uh, in Python, the index starts with zero position. If I just give one, it specifies a second row. So it will uh, just pick up the second row and it will display. And the uh, uh, num uh, two, uh, the upper bound will not be considered here. Now, if I want to select the row by position with one another example, df dot i lock of three colon means it will start, the, start displaying all the rows from fourth record. 3 means you need to say 3 plus 1 since it starts with 0 zero position, right? So you have to give 3 colon means how many of the records you have got in the data set, all the records will be displayed from fourth row. Since we have got only one record after the fourth record, we will be getting only those records. So that is how you can very well specify either the range or the beginning position of the record till the end of the total data set, you can select the rows and display it by the position. This we are using it with integer location. Now, if we want to just select the rows based on the labels, then you just remove I from it, okay? You have to give df dot loc, so locate command. Loc alone is sufficient. So loc means you want to locate the rows based on the names, labels, based on the labels you want to retrieve the records. Then I should go for df.loc. Then I open brackets here, you could have seen me given a colon. So first colon here represents all the rows. Then I am specifying the, speci the two different columns, C3 and C5. So it will display all the rows, but display only C3 and C5 columns. 
Next example is select rows in positions 1 and 2. Second and third row, all columns. How to do that? Once again, I can use integer location, I lock. Here I give 1, comma 2, comma colon. So all the columns, wherever I give colon, it will just give. First, first place, if I give colon, it will represent row. In this example, second example, you can give, you can see me giving colon at the end. Okay, so the first portion, 1, comma 2 represents the rows, whereas this colon represents the columns. So here colon represents all columns. So this particular example will retrieve second and third row with all columns. Now, let us see how to retrieve the records meeting certain logical condition, but only specific columns. How to go about it with LOC command? The command is this, df.loc, df of c3 greater than 90. So this is my condition, comma, specific columns, c4, c1. So likewise, based on the our requirement and conditions, we can very well give like this by separating commas. Next one is subsetting columns. Select single column with specific name. Let me first tell you this so that you will clearly understand. First and foremost, whatever the data frame that we have used, created, df. Then I just put this. Within this, what is the single column I want to re retrieve? That you specify within quotes. That's it. You will uh, see the single column data set values available on the screen. In case if you want to retrieve multiple columns with specific names, as simple as that, you have to just include the column, one more column. Even if you want to include one or two more columns, just separate it by comma. That's it. So df, here I want to retrieve c3 and c1. So I just give df of c3, comma c1. So this is how you will subset the columns. Then the last one is reshaping data. This one is to convert rows into columns, uh, especially with uh, uh, data science perspective uh, for data analysis, as well as for uh, machine learning uh, model generation, we'll be using this melt command. This will really convert the given rows into columns. So that is the purpose of melt command. So the syntax goes like this, pd dot melt, then you have to supply the data frame that we have created. Here we have created df. So I should say pd dot melt of df. The next command could be for concatenating two different data frames, which is pd dot concat df comma df1. So I have already created two data frames which I want to concatenate it. Then it will give me the merge data frame as a result. Then the last one is they're dropping columns from data frame. After some analysis, I feel that some of the columns is not essential for me for further analysis. So in which case I can really drop those specific columns. So the syntax is df dot drop of columns equal to, then you give the column names, as simple as that. So this is how you can drop the unwanted columns from the data frame. The last one is sorting data frames, which is uh, like you can very well sort the uh, column either in the ascending order or in the descending order. By default, it will be in the ascending order. So we can say df dot sort underscore values. So I log, log, sort underscore values are all various methods that is available in Pandas library. So df dot sort underscore values, which is the column you want to sort, c2 is the column. So supply that as a parameter for sort underscore values method. Since I'm not giving any uh, uh, option here, like ascending equal to true also I can give, but it is not required. By default, the values will be sorted in the ascending order. So it is highly sufficient if you give sort underscore values of the column name. Now, if you want to um, uh, uh, just sort the column in the descending order, then you have to specify like this. 
as i want to sort c4 in the as, uh, descending order then i should say ascending equal to false so uh, true i am just changing it to false thereby it, uh, the column c4 will be sorted in the descending order and displayed so this is how you can sort the data frames either in the ascending order or in the descending order then renaming the data frame if i want to rename uh, likewise uh, you can very well give df dot rename so rename is another method in pandas we can so uh, give the parameter like columns equal to c5 is the existing column name which we have seen which has to be renamed as column 5 so henceforth after you execute this command c5 will be referred as col5 then how to rename multiple columns the same way as we have done earlier here with rename also by separating command with the suitable uh, name to be changed you can very well uh, rename the multiple columns so here c1 will be renamed as x c3 would have been renamed as y c4 will be renamed as x z so this is how you can rename data frames okay uh, so uh, that's all about the theory part of it so quickly i'll just share my uh, jupiter node yeah so le let us quickly uh, see the demo part of whatever we have discussed in the theory session for this library so le first let us create the data frame so in order to do so just highlight that particular cell then click run so this i am teaching you with uh, data frames you um, jupiter node now i'll just create this one in order to so i can also include cell command here so if you want to include that command i press symbol so it will create a blank uh, cell for me wherein i can create a df i just type df then i execute this executing frame so this is how you will get the result so c1 to c for column names the index will act as uh, row names let us quickly create another data frame so this is the first data frame that we have created so for moving further we see how to create so i am just having data frame here let me just execute this i'll run this afterwards i'll just uh, press symbol over here so i type in df1 to display the second data frame now you can see me uh, displaying the uh, index name is 16 27 38 and then column says c1 c2 c3 likewise whatever we supply for index that will be acting as the index for columns c1 to c3 it is coming as the column names so it is we that we have to provide a proper index names and column names so that is how you next one is to create data frame with multi index so here uh, as we discuss in the theory session i let this block then you just run the cell that's it so you will be uh, getting the uh, uh, particular one so this df would have been altered with multiple index now i just include that command df i just type and execute in order to show the output with multi index yes now you got the different output right so this row and val which i have supplied here for names along with this uh, column values have been displayed here so this is how the exist data frames can be changed to multi index data frame the next part is subsetting rows in a data frame how to select specific rows based on the uh, condition now i just want to locate a particular um, uh, 
uh, columns alone selects a particular column c3 to c5 alone i want to retrieve but all rows i want to select so in which case i can very well give this command okay so i can very well have this output so c3 c4 c5 only these specific columns have been selected but since i have given colon in the initial one it is selecting all rows so that is you can work with i lock command the same way here i lock of one comma two but all columns should be selected then you will be getting the output like this the next command is df dot location the c3 column whatever the data element value which is greater than 90 only those records have to be selected and also from c4 and c1 so in which case you will get the output like this c3 the data element value should be greater than 90 then it will pick up c4 and c1 column values so that is how you are getting this as a output then how to read multiple columns with specific names is like this df of c3 comma c1 so i am selecting these these two column names c3 and c1 with its suitable data elements now i want to specifically select only one single column rather than multiple column then this is the command the data frame name then you supply the column name as the parameter within quotes then you will get that particular column as the output then how to reshape the command this particular melt command that we have discussed which will convert the rows into columns so whichever the value that has been assigned for c1 column we have got five rows right with the c1 value so all these will be uh, given here then for c2 again you will get five different values then for c3 five different values likewise up till c5 you will get all the values but what do you witness here all the rows which has been initially created has been converted into columns with the names variable and value variable will be the column names and value will be the data elements in the respective columns so that is the purpose of melt command then in order to merge two different data frames you have to use concat command so we are using uh, we are merging df comma df1 so if you want to execute this highlight this and run so can you see here so this is how you can have the merged data frames but you can ask me why you are getting non applicable null values as nan here since in the uh, df1 it is of 3 by 3 matrix but df1 is of 5 by 5 matrix so wherever the place it doesn't have any data elements it will give us the nan value but somehow it is merging two different data frames that is the usage of concat command the next one is dropping columns from data frames how to specifically drop the particular column see here we have got initially c1 to c5 now we are dropping c2 c4 so the remaining columns are c1 c3 and c5 so this is how you are having the resultant data frame now to sort the data frames we can very well sort it in either ascending or descending let me show you how to sort it in the ascending order first. so can you see me here guys c2 column i am sorting it in the ascending order see here 30 46 49 65 98 so it is uh, displaying from low value to high value in the ascending order now the same way if you want just to sort the c4 column in descending order then i should give ascending equal to false see here it is uh, printing the values in the reverse direction that is descending order highest value first then comes the least value at the end 76 to 32 now how to rename the single uh, column of the data frame so this how the earlier you would have seen me giving c5 as the column name for the last column 
now it has been changed to column 5 col5 so this is how you can use rename built in to rename the specific column in case if you want to rename multiple columns just separate it by comma and provide suitable column names let us see how to work on that see here guys so it has been changed to this x c2 then y then you will have a z c5 so likewise see this uh, 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 the entire data set you have got c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 but what is that i am expecting python to do c1 has to be changed to x so it has been changed c2 is left as it is then c3 has been changed to y yes it has been changed now c4 has to be changed as c now it has been changed but c5 i am not affecting it okay so that is the reason it is displaying as as the same name so this is how the specific columns either one single column you can uh, rename or multiple columns you can rename by separating it by comma so this is how you can rename multiple columns of a data frame to, so to quickly recap we have seen uh, the, the uh, what is the purpose of the pandas library the introduction to pandas then we have seen how to create the data frames then how to uh, select uh, the particular rows or uh, subset the rows or subset the columns using the ilock or lo uh, location uh, command either with the integer index or with the label index label column then we have just seen how to uh, concatenate uh, two different uh, data frames then how to rename the columns that also we have discussed either uh, one column or multiple columns so this is how this is uh, only the uh, part of the data uh, pandas package uh, i have taught you in this session uh, proceeding further uh, we see uh, many more uh, comments uh, dwelling uh, in depth into pandas library uh, when you really uh, uh, interested enough uh, in uh, joining the uh, total courses so i am offering uh, multiple courses uh, for the entire data science uh, uh, program in basic level intermediate level and uh, advanced level that too with many tools with python r programming and also with the sps uh, thank you guys uh, like you can see all these course details uh, in the urban pro website so i hope uh, all of you would have uh, uh, enjoyed the session like you the more and more uh, you just go through this session and uh, uh, play the same commands uh, on your own you will be exploring more and you will have interest in joining the uh, live interactive session with me through urban pro and uh, uh, before concluding my session i really thank uh, urban pro and its team for having uh, recognized me and given me the wonderful opportunity for uh, uh, giving this uh, session thank you all guys thank you